Today I'm going to be sharing a bit about my experience at Aquashella Dallas 2019 and also doing a painting demonstration and giving you some tips on painting this emperor angelfish in acrylics. I want to share a little bit about Aquashella. If you are not interested in this section of the video and you want to skip ahead to the tutorial, just jump ahead right here and you can get started with that portion. But for this event, it is an aquarium festival for both fresh and salt and they have some other critters, some reptiles there as well. It is huge and you'll have to forgive my camera does not have the right filter to film the blue lights that most of these guys are under. but huge. I can't even stress how huge this was. Look, red-eyed tree frogs. I'm actually currently researching those guys. I'm going to set up a vivarium with them in about a year or so. I've spoken with the reptile place that puts these together. Um, there's a local reptile shop actually, but anyway, you'll see those in videos in about a year or so. I'm really excited, but I want to keep researching in the meantime. I used to keep red-eyed tree frog, or no, not red-eyed tree frogs. I had an Australian whites tree frog for 12 years. His name was Rib. His last name was Bit. He was adorable. Moving on, here are some freshwater sections. They had a shrimp competition there, hand instruments. Those are the ones that I use to test most of my water parameters on my, my nano reef tank. One of those little tanks for the shrimp competition is now in my house, housing my betta fish. There were some more freshwater fish. And it felt like as you walked through this venue, it was just never ending. You just kept finding more and more and more stuff. They had a lot of art installations as well. Here were some snakes. I got to hold one of these guys. Look at all of them, they're so beautiful. I loved this one, he was so pretty. Moving on, we've got some angel fish. I mean, again, so many fish, so many things to look at. It wasn't something just for saltwater, just for fresh, which I think you see a lot at expos. It's kind of focused on one or the other. This was just a combination of everything. The most beautiful betas I think I have ever seen, in person anyway, so gorgeous. One of those, the, they had so many there that I've only seen in photo, never in person. It was really cool to see all of those. So as I'm recording at this point, this was on Sunday before it had opened to the public. So there aren't a lot of people here. During Saturday especially, oh my gosh, it was like walking through Disneyland. There were so many lines of people just waiting to shuffle through. They finally, with the fire marshal, they had to stop and wait for one person to come out before they could let a person in. I think someone said the line was about a quarter mile long. This event was so huge. So right now, this is before it had really opened. So not all of the vendors were set up on this Sunday morning just yet. You can see some of the tables are still a bit empty. Some beautiful little seahorses. Oh, my filming is absolutely terrible. There we go. Oh, how cute are they? So gorgeous. And then back to the sections where my camera can't handle the blue light. My clownfish are currently babies and they're in a 13 and a half gallon nano reef tank, but I'm going to have to upgrade them when they get a little older. And I loved this setup. I love the stand. This one is a 20 gallon. I think I'd like to go with a 30 gallon dedicated anemone tank for them. Eventually, again, next year, all my plans for next year. But I think they would like that bigger tank and an anemone. Yep, looks like they want that bigger tank. more of the art installations. How cool is that? I especially like the red-eyed tree frog because I'm obsessed with them at the moment. Well, I've been obsessed with them for years. Then we have more art. I did not record my own booth because I'm a genius, but I'm gonna see if somebody else has footage of my booth that I can share with you guys in the next video. Now onto the artwork. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the real-time version of this tutorial available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my one to three hour long tutorials. I have over 150 that you can watch instantly and I upload a new one every single week. If you want to just get an idea of what Patreon is like, I will put a link in the video description to my Patreon video library. You can see everything that is available now. In addition to that, there is a two hour long colored pencil tutorial that you can follow along with now for free just for checking it out. Before we start on this tutorial, make sure to watch all the way to the end where I've got some bonus footage of a painting demonstration that I did at Aquashella along with some photos. Now onto this. I'm starting by painting my background. When painting with acrylics, it's a layering process. It's a lot harder to try to draw out your subject and paint around it. The paint just dries too quickly. So the better option is to paint the entire background and then draw your subject just layering. The canvas that I'm using here is a Fredericks Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas. I am sponsored just for transparency, but I use these canvases, it's extremely smooth, so it makes it a lot easier to blend. If you're using a canvas that's too rough, it's going to be very, very hard to blend out all, all of these brush strokes that I've got in here now. So I faded, I've got my magenta, 
I faded down into blue that had a little bit of black and white to gray that up. And then I'm adding orange in the upper color before I blend this. I'm going to use a mop brush to get rid of a lot of these brush strokes. My mop brushes are actually blush brushes. I get usually at discount places like if you're in the US, TJ Maxx, or I'm trying to think some of the other places I've picked them up, Ross. Sometimes they have a makeup section and you can get these blush brushes for very cheap. But the blush brushes are way, they don't shed as much as an actual art mop brush. So for acrylic paints, I absolutely prefer to use those. So once I've got my background on there, I want to dry that completely. Now I'm going to take a stencil and airbrush my pattern. If you don't have an airbrush, you don't have to do the background at all, or you could use the stencil as most people do, where they kind of sponge that the paint on there to create that background. For me, it's just easier and faster to go ahead and airbrush this. I'm using a purple paint. This is the Golden's Airbrush, their high fluid acrylic airbrush paints. And for me, I like to get kind of a blotchy look for that background so that it has this worn feel. I'm not trying to get a very even coverage here. If I want it even, I want to move the airbrush from one side to the other smoothly, not wiggle it around how I was doing there. That was very bad form. Once that was done, I'm going to take black paint. I've got a bit of purple mixed in there and I'm creating a vignette. I just want to darken these edges. I want to really make sure that my background doesn't take away from the fish. I want the fish to stand out against it. And I think with this one, making that background darker is going to give me better results. I pre-drew out my fish on a piece of tracing paper. You can freehand that if you, you want. You can trace it if you want, whatever you're comfortable with. And now I'm going to take transfer paper and transfer that image onto the canvas. The reason I'm doing this and not just drawing straight on the canvas is this is going to keep my work really clean. I'm not going to have eraser marks all over. I'm not, I mean, it just simplifies everything. And in this case, I'm not going to draw the stripes in his body on until I paint the base layer of blue. Like I said earlier, this is all a layering process. So I'm going to save that drawing off to the side and now I can start painting in the fish. Now the colors that I'm using here, the yellow and that light purple and blue, those are very translucent colors. So in order to make them show up against my dark background, I'm going to mix a lot of titanium white in with my paint. So right now, this, as you can see, not the proper color. This is not what I want my end result to be, but I need to get a lot of white on there first in order to cover up that dark background so that my brighter colors, my yellows, oranges, anything that tends to be more translucent will show up very well. My titanium white, as I add that, it does make the colors more opaque, but it also makes them pastel. So because I layer so much, that is the key word in today's video, that I can just keep layering until I get the colors the way I want. But I do have to start with using a lot of the white to cover that dark background. So I'm just going to blend that black down into the purple in the body here. And when you're dealing with white colors, like in this case, the white on the, the front of the fish's face, the white is reflective. You're not going to want to leave it white. It will look very flat. We want to add a lot of other colors, blues and purples, and whatever colors are in the background will reflect on that portion of the fish's skin or scales, whatever the case may be. So in this case, that's where I've got these lighter colors first. I'll dry that just so I don't accidentally smudge black into the areas where I want the yellow. So the yellow, I'm using a light yellow. I've mixed white into it to make it more opaque so that it'll cover that background. Now it's not dark enough. You can see I'll, I'll have to make a glaze or layer more translucent yellow on top of this later on. But for now, just to get that background covered, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. Now I do thin my paints a bit with water. I'm using the Liquitex Basics and I use those not because they're inexpensive, but because they just work really well for my techniques. They are more translucent. So because I like to do so many glazes and layers with the colors, these are absolutely perfect for me. And while they do tend to be on the less expensive side of acrylic paints, they're still archival. They're still light fast. The bottles, you can check and see what the light fast ratings are. There are some fluorescent colors that would not be so light fast, but for all of the colors I use, it's very important to me that my work remain archival, that it not fade on the buyer in a few years. So everything I've got to make sure is nice and light fast and the Liquitex Basics do are light fast, even though they are a more inexpensive paint. I've occasionally had people comment on that. Why are you using student grade paint? It's quality. They just aren't as pigmented as, as the heavy body or the soft body. And I have those paints, but I always find myself going back to these ones. So now I've taken some cobalt blue. I added a bit of white in there again to make it more translucent and filled in the body. Not even worrying about the stripes now. If I tried to go through and paint the yellow stripe and then the blue stripe and then a yellow stripe, it would take forever and it wouldn't look as nice. So it's way better to paint this in layers this way. We've got that shadow, the dark area of the fin. We're going to blend that right into the blue. 
use that mop brush just to get rid of a few of those brush strokes. It's okay if some of my brush strokes show, but I do want to soften them a bit. Now, right now, this is a pretty ugly stage. It's really easy to get to this point and think, my gosh, I'm terrible at this. I'm going to give up. I'm not going to continue painting. Don't do that. Keep layering. Whatever you, whatever stage you're at, no matter how bad it looks, it's not ruined. You're just not finished yet. Keep layering and keep painting until it looks how you want it to. Acrylic paints especially, you have a lot of freedom to just keep painting over an area. If something goes badly, just paint over it. Very, very forgiving. So I'm using a hair dryer to dry this. Once that's completely dry, I can move on. I'm going to take my line drawing that I had on the tracing paper, line that up, go ahead and tape that back in place. And now I can line up the lines of on his body. Now, yeah, I can freehand that in. That's absolutely an option. But if I already took the time to draw it out, why not save the time and just reuse that drawing? And I can go through this way more quickly. For me, I have to get a lot of artwork done in a very short amount of time. So I'm always looking for ways that I can save that time. Little shortcuts, but it's important for me that those shortcuts don't affect the artwork negatively. As long as the shortcuts just save time, I am all for those. So now I've got those white lines on there. And the, the transfer paper that I like, it's by Low Cornell. It's their white. I'm going to go ahead and paint those yellow lines. And this is the same thing as on the body. I've got to have a bit of titanium white mixed in with this yellow. Otherwise, I'm just going to be tinting a green tone over the blue that's on that background. And even though this yellow is too white, that's no problem. I can come back and add brighter yellow right over it when it dries. I'm using a Tacklin Bristled Filbert brush for this. You may want to use a round brush or something that's a little bit easier to control for lines. But with any brush, the harder you push, the thicker your brush stroke is going to be. In this case, I want thinner brush strokes, so I'm not pushing very hard with that line. Now I've switched over to a round where I need these brush strokes to be a bit thinner. And where I want them to get thinner and thinner again, using less and less pressure on that brush. And if you're new to painting and you're having a hard time with that, that comes with practice and with time. Don't feel like, man, I'm just not good at this. I give up. Just keep practicing. It does get easier the more you paint. Now I've got to dry that completely. And you want to make sure that all of your layers are completely dry before you put paint on top of it. Because when you put wet paint on top of paint that's already wet, unless you're just blending wet into wet, but if you're trying to layer like this, you can lift the previous layers off. So you want to make sure that's all the way dry. Better defining these lines. You can see even with the white, they were a bit translucent. You could still see the blue color showing through that yellow. So I'm going to put another layer over those. And I don't care if all of my yellow looks exactly the same. If one line is a little bit brighter than the other, not a problem. I'm going to be going over this anyway. I'm going to add some highlights with white just on the top here and let that fade down into the yellow. I'm going to skip ahead while that dries and work on the face. I've got to get the blue and purple reflections of the background onto the white. Like I was talking about earlier, white is reflective. We don't want to leave it flat white or it's just going to look like a cartoon. Got the shadow on the inside of the mouth. Now watch when you add shadows. Don't assume it's dark. It's a shadow. Just use black to shade things. Usually purple or magentas will be a better choice. Sometimes blues. It depends on what it is you're doing. But try those colors first. Use black for your darkest portions of the shadow. You're going to get a lot more depth that way than just shading everything with black. And especially if you're shading yellows, oranges, or reds, black, occasionally black works well with red, but with oranges and reds especially, I'm sorry, yellows and oranges especially, black is usually not the color you're going to want to shade with. Usually in those cases, you're going to want to go with purples or magentas. So now I'm taking the straight yellow. This is a light yellow out of the tube and see how I can make those yellows much more bold just going over the areas that I had previously painted a light yellow. Adding some orange and that orange is extremely translucent as well, especially the orange with Liquitex Basics. Really, really translucent. I really only use that color for doing glazes when I want to tint a color. If I need a more bold orange, I'm going to mix that with my yellow and red. I find that I get better results that way. Some details there around the face.
I'm taking a little bit of black now for the shadows on the blue of the body. That's actually purple mixed with black, not straight black. Adding a bit of shadows right on the back end of the body and then the darker areas around the face. And then taking a, this is just a lighter version, that cobalt blue with some white for the detail around the eyes. And this canvas is eight by 10 inches. It's a really nice one because it's not so big that things are drying and you can't get things blended before it dries, but it's also big enough that you can still get enough details on a subject like this. I'm taking a lighter blue and going around the outside of the fins. Now this is just to make him stand out against the background, not, not necessarily that that fish should be have a glow of that blue around him. I'm going to do that again with a more a warmer, more teal type of blue. And see how these details really make him stand out. Now, I don't want to just outline him. I don't want him to look like he's an outlined cartoon, but I do want it to look like there's a back, a little bit of a backlit, a glow from the lighting around him. And I'm going to, going to do that with a bright aqua green color. I'll do a little bit more shading. I added some red and then I took a brush with yellow and just smudged that up. And it gave me some really nice shading there got magenta. I'm going to shade the bottom side of the body here. And this lets him look more three-dimensional so he's not quite so flat. I want my fish to look well fed. More shadows on the underside of the face. And all of these shadows, all of these little details are really going to make a difference in making your work look more three-dimensional and not completely paper flat. So here is that light aqua I was talking about. It mixed a bit of white with it using a liner brush just to get a little bit of detailing and it really helps him to stand out against the background. I don't like to outline things with black. I don't like things to really have an outline except in a case like this where it gives him this look that of being slightly backlit. I'm gonna pull that aqua green in a few areas on the fish. A Little bit more shading. Now for this fin, th these fins are fairly translucent, so I'm just going to take white, put a few lines where the fin will be, how it curves, and then little dots around the outer edge. Some little shiny dots on the outer edge of the fins as well. Make sure you don't put these dots inside the fish or it will look like you gave him ick. Here I just want it to look like the light is catching the edge, edge of the fins. A few more highlights here, again using that titanium white. Just a little bit. I don't want to overdo these highlights. It makes them look a little bit shinier. Going to do the same thing in the blue. A little bit of highlighting inside those lines. You can see how everything is just layered. It's easy to look at a painting and kind of think of it as a paint by number, just put the right color in the right place. And that's really not how it works if you want your work to be more shaded and have a little bit more depth. You're going to achieve that by layering everything. A few more shadows. Next, we're going to add bubbles. And I do have a video walking you through in a slower, slow form um, how exactly I paint these bubbles. So I will have a card pop up if you wanna check that out. They're really easy. But essentially, I'm going to take black paint on this one, being that it's so dark, and make sad faces, the top of the bubble. I'm going to take a damp brush and just kind of smudge that down a little bit. I wanna make sure that this stays round, all of these bubbles. But I wanna let the background color show through. That's very important because these bubbles need to look translucent. Then I'm going to mix a light lavender color so that it's just a lighter version of what my background is and make a smiley face for the bottom side of the bubble. Once I get all of those in, I'm going to come back through with a liner brush and I'm going to use titanium white and put a shine on the inside or the top section of the black. And I usually will try to curve that if they're big enough. And then a little bit of a highlight on the bottom side of the bubble where the light is escaping. So there's the base. Now we're going to make them look shiny. There's that white dot slightly curved on the upper section and a dot just at the very bottom edge where the light is escaping and that makes them look nice and sparkly and these are very simple bubbles again i've got that tutorial that walks you through in a much slower fashion exactly how that is but there is the emperor angel he's really fairly easy to paint as long as you work in layers like this
And just remember, if you're new to painting and you try something like this for the first time and it doesn't come out quite like you wanted it to, don't be discouraged. That's part of the process. Your first painting is no indication as to whether or not you're going to be amazing at this. I do have a tutorial, a very first acrylic painting tutorial of a copper banded butterfly fish. Make sure to check that out because that's going to walk you through a lot slower all of the supplies that I'm using and exactly everything that I do. I think that is an easier first project and then come back and try this one. So one of my favorite things, there are lots of favorite things, but one of my favorite things about Aquashella, I got to do a painting demonstration. So I I only had 30 minutes for this demonstration and it was one of those things where I really didn't know what to do. I didn't even know if anyone would be interested at this event in watching something like that. So it was kind of exciting to see and less embarrassing than it would have been otherwise that people actually were watching that. I was so afraid I'd be up there by myself and people just be walking by like, why is this girl up there? So I painted the background at home knowing there's no way with the dry time and such. I'm not going to get the background and a subject done. And I wanted to do this as a test piece because I want to do a larger Aquashella logo with orcas and have the patch, the white patch over their eye because of the shape of it. It would work perfectly to replace that with the Aquashella logo. So this was kind of a little half done test for that. But I had already painted the background. Now all I had to do was paint the orcas in. And they had a, I guess, DJ or MC that was asking great questions. So he was really good. The whole event was just put on so well. But this guy who was doing this, and I forget his name, but he was asking great questions about art. He was keeping, you know, the asking questions that I could help the crowd who may want to paint. Little tips there. So really just a great, great event. I, I still can't get over how well everything was put together for this show. George and Sean, who are the main two who ran this, and I'm sure a million other people were involved, but oh my gosh, this event was just so, so cool. So one of the things that happened on this, it was so funny. There was a gentleman in the crowd who asked me how much for the painting. And I'm like, I'm not selling this. It's not like a good painting. It's just a half done quick demo. So I said, first person to bring me a decent cup of coffee. He goes, how do you like it? I told him um, cream, just cream, no sugar. So he goes off and he comes back a few minutes later. There he is with my cup of coffee. So now I'm selling artwork for coffee. I was very tired and very desperate for coffee that day. Look, he even remembered the cream. You just can't ask for more. So I had to stop painting to set up my coffee and then went back to finishing the demonstration. And it was funny because I was worried, am I gonna get this done in 30 minutes? I got it done and like, even with answering the questions, it only took about 20 minutes. So I painted a little too fast. I, I guess I could have slowed that down a bit. I need some rays of light. And there I am signing the painting. And this gentleman, actually, it turned out he is Coralfish 12G, George, here on YouTube. It is his dad. I had no idea at the time. So there he is with his painting and my coffee. Yes, selling artwork for coffee. There is George, or again, Coralfish 12G here on YouTube with his aquashella painting you guys have seen this one i if not i'll have a card pop up you can check out that painting that, that took a lot longer than the 20 minutes that the whale took and then another really cool thing razor blade art this artist here brought me a a hand drawn this is done in copic markers a whole ocean scene and it is gorgeous and this photo does not show how pretty it is but i got to meet a couple of fans had shown up and well, he brought me some artwork that's phenomenal. And there's some dragons on the other side that I didn't think to flip over for the photo. But I got to meet quite a few YouTubers who I've been watching for quite a while. Tidal, Tidal Gardens and Simply Beta. I've been watching so much of their stuff. Melves Reeves, Reef, I can't talk. You guys know that. But I got to meet so many people that I've been watching their, their content for months now, trying to get tips on my own, keeping my fish healthier. So really just a fun event if you ever get a chance to come to an Aquashella event. I cannot recommend it enough. It was so fun. I cannot wait for the next event. If you've not already, make sure to hit subscribe so you can keep up with all of my new art videos every single week and my live streams. And I've got some really fun collaborations coming up with some of your favorite fish YouTubers very, very soon.